I want to welcome you to heartofashepherd.com. Today is Christmas Day, December the 25th, 2023, but we're continuing with our chronological study of the scriptures today, and I appreciate you being a part of the Heart of a Shepherd family. Well, our scripture reading today is 1 Kings chapter 16. Now, the title, Warning, the evil committed by a nation's leaders will not go unpunished. Now, again, the focus of 1 Kings 16 is almost entirely on the succession of kings who ruled the northern ten tribes uh, now known as Israel. Now, as I study the rise and fall of kings in Israel, I'm reminded not only of the pernicious bent of men for evil, but also that the evidence of God's sovereignty is ever-present. Now, I want to put just a, a note of caution. Don't be discouraged with all the names of the different kings. They are confusing. Uh, I've obviously been studying the word many, many years, and I have a little bit of an advantage, but uh, I even find them difficult to remember all the details and so I encourage you, don't be discouraged with all the names, but just understand that you see the hand of God in these uh, succession of kings that we will follow in our study today. And so we're looking at 1 Kings chapter 16, and I'm given the overall title of this chapter, A Succession of Wicked Kings. Now, the Lord, faithful to his word and promises, the wickedness of the kings who ruled Israel did not go unpunished. Now, again, just a reminder, when we refer to Israel at this time in our study of the Word of God, it's not a reference to the whole nation of 12 tribes anymore. Israel as a nation now would be the 10 tribes to the north, and then the two tribes in the south, which would consist of Judah and Benjamin. So I always want to remind you of that in case you're somewhat of a novice to uh, reading and studying of the scriptures. Well, let's go back now. Now, after the ten tribes in the north rebelled, you might remember the rebellion took place under Jeroboam. They rebelled against who? Against Rehoboam, who happened to be the son of Solomon. And forever after that, Israel was divided into Israel in the north, Judah in the south. Well, as you remember, Jer Jeroboam did lead the people to turn from the Lord and made golden calves for the people to worship. Now, Jeroboam, who was the first king of the northern Israel, as you know, failed to obey the Lord, and the prophet Ahijah prophesied his lineage would be cut off, First Kings 14. Now, Nadab, or Nadab, as some might would say, was Jeroboam's son. Now, he followed his father, and he reigned for two years, but he was assassinated by Basha, who became the third king of the northern ten tribes known as Israel. And so uh, Jeroboam did serve as king for a long time. His son, though, because of the wickedness of his father, was cut off early, only reigning for two years, and then he was followed by Basha, who is not of uh, Jeroboam's family at all. So the seed of Jeroboam will be cut off. So Basha, who became the third king of the northern ten tribes known as Israel. Now that brings us to 1 Kings chapter 16. Now because Basha continued in Jeroboam's evil ways, we read that the Lord sent the prophet Jehu to forewarn him that like Jeroboam, he and his family would also be cut off. Why? Because of their wickedness. And they would suffer the same judgment as Jeroboam's household. Now, although Elah, the son of Basha, did succeed his father and became the fourth king of Israel, but once again, he too only reigned for less than two years. Now, he was assassinated by Zimri, the captain of half of the chariots in Israel. And so you would think he would have had the army on his side. But Zimri, then he did fulfill in Israel's role as the fifth king. He did fulfill Jehu's prophecy that Basha's household would be cut off. Well, Zimri's reign, however, it lasted only seven days, according to 1 Kings 16 and verse 15. Why is that? 
Well, the army of Israel heard how Eli had been slain, Eli being the son of Bashan. Therefore, the people chose one of their own to be king. And so we read in chapter 16 and verse 16 that Omri, the captain of the army of Israel, became king. Now, when Zimri learned the soldiers of Israel were loyal, not to him, but to Omri, the man whom they had chosen, we read that Zimri went to his palace, set fire to it, and he died in the flames, as you read verses 18 through 19. And why is that? Why only 17, uh, seven days? For his sins, which he had sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Well, Omri, chosen of the people, went on to serve Israel as the sixth king, and he reigned for 12 years, according to verses 21 through 23. In the sixth year of his reign, he purchased land, and he built a new capital for Israel, which he named Samaria. Now, Samaria will remain the capital of the northern ten tribes, now known as Israel, for the rest of the history until the Assyrian captivity. And yet, once again, we read Omri, verses 25 through 26, wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord, and he did worse than all that were before him, worse than Jeroboam, worse than Basha. And so here we have a continual pattern of growing wickedness, a, a, if you will, a descent of this culture. Why? Because of the wicked leadership over uh, Israel. Now, Omri's death, you'll see in the scripture, set the stage for the rise of the most notorious king and queen in Israel's history. For we read in verse 28 that Ahab, his son, reigned in his stead. Well, a closing thought, because we're going to be following the wicked, evil Ahab and his wife Jezebel for the next several days. Now, regarding Ahab, there are few in history whose infamy is so appalling that mentioning their name paints a picture of gross, notorious wickedness, such as King Ahab and his wicked, idolatrous wife, Jezebel. In fact, they define the extremity of evil in Israel. In verses 29 through 33. And so we read that, and I'm going to quote verse 33 that Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. You see, Ahab forsook the Lord entirely, and he worshipped and introduced a new god, a new idol, to Israel, and the name was Baal, the pagan god of rain and the harvest. Now, the depths of wickedness in Israel during the reign of Ahab and Jezebel would seem unimaginable if it were not for the historical record that the Lord has reserved for us in His Word. 1 Kings 16 and verse 34 concludes our study today with evidence of how far Israel had descended into wickedness. For in Ahab's day, we read, the city of Jericho was rebuilt which Joshua had cursed in chapter 6 and verse 26. And so this nation, Israel, had no fear of God. Well, here's a warning as we close today, and it is this, that no nation or people will escape the judgment of a just God. My friend, what a challenge that is, and it is a warning for you and for me I live in the United States, and so I particularly see the gross wickedness of Washington, D.C., and I know that our sins are calling for the judgment of God. In fact, I believe as you look around at our nation, our community, our society, without a doubt, we're already under the judgment of a holy God. Well, thank you for being a part of the daily devotional, and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing through the end of this year, and then beginning the next year on the second year of our two-year chronological study of God's Word. Thank you for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd, and God bless you. Bye-bye.